Welcome back everybody. We now have the rudder, the horizontal stabilizer, and the elevator all completed for the Zenith Super Duty. Now it's time to get started on the wings. The first step in the instruction manual for the wings is getting started on the spars. That's what I'm opening up here. Two big, large, heavy spars that come pre-built from the factory. Just from opening up and unpacking the spars, I kept getting scratched from the corners of these stiffeners. So the first step for me was to round the corner of these stiffeners so that they are not so sharp and dangerous to work around. Here's kind of a close-up at the spars. And if you're not familiar with Zenith kits, the spars come pre-built from the factory, which is really nice because they're built with these solid rivets that have to be uh, bucked with a, a rivet gun and a bucking bar. And these are actually pretty big ones too. So most people don't have the equipment to be able to do that at home. So having these built at the factory ensures that they are done correctly, they're straight, and they look great. They're pretty much ready to go, I think. It looks like they already have the strut attachments and uh, the hardware taped to the spar. So I'm guessing these are match drilled to the, the angle here. Now on my cruiser, I had to actually drill these holes and I believe I had to drill these holes too. So it's kind of nice. The Super Duty just has more and more little things like that that are already completed for the builder. And I don't know if you can tell, you can see a little bit of this green stuff here. This is that Cortex or Cortex, I'm not sure offhand what it's called, but it's the, um, the corrosion inhibitor or the primer that they put under all the mating surfaces here. So anything that comes pre-built from the factory, they've already had it uh, protected and primed. This area here is where the spar extension gets riveted to, so I wanted to scuff it up and shoot a coat of primer on there. And then after I, after I scuffed it up, I wanted to clean it off with some alcohol to make sure it's perfectly clean so that the primer sticks to the surface. I have this piece of cardboard which just happened to be an almost perfect fit for the spar. I laid it on there just to protect it from overspray from when I primed the end here. Not that it would matter if I got any overspray on the spar, but it just looks better if there's not sloppy overspray everywhere. This part of the aluminum here had a little bit of a, not a chewed up tip, but a rougher surface than I wanted. So I used a file to smooth out the end and I just used sandpaper to clean it up and polish it up real nice and smooth. On the spar extension and the L angle or the spar stiffener, these three holes are already drilled out to 3 16 for the A6 rivet. But these three holes on the spar are not drilled out to 3 16 So these are the three holes right on the top and bottom. So there's six total that need drilled out to 3 16 of an inch. This is just a step in the manual where it tells you that these six holes are going to need drilled out and opened up. I really don't like metal shavings collecting anywhere, so I always try to vacuum up and get rid of them right away. Well, once all that boring prep work is done, it's finally time to start the fun part, which is assembling parts. This is the spar tip extension, I think it's called. And as you see, it just gets riveted on to the end. There's some doublers that have to get riveted in there. So don't forget to put the doublers in if you're building a Super Duty. And I don't know about you if you are building, but this is always a really fun part for me. I love just putting a bunch of rivets in the holes. It's just kind of fun.
Now don't forget the three rivets on the top and the three rivets on the bottom are the big A6 rivets. You can see these two Clecos here, I've wrapped in blue tape. And the reason why is when I put in all these rivets and start taking these Clecos out, I wanna make sure I do not take these two out because later on there will be a rib that gets riveted in these holes with, with the uh, doublers. There's a note in the manual that tells you that, but I just wanted to put this tape here just as a reminder so I don't just pull these out and put a, a rivet in there. I now have it all ready to rivet, so let the fun begin. These big A6 rivets take a regular rivet gun with kind of a regular flat tip on the end. So I have this blue rivet gun for the A6 rivets, and then I use my red rivet gun from Zenith for the uh, A5 rivets. Sometimes with these A6 rivets, and sometimes even with the A5 rivets, you'll have to run a, a drill bit kind of slowly through the hole just to clean it up a little bit to get a rivet in. And usually that's in areas where there's numerous layers of aluminum. Notice the little L bracket on the underside of this spar extension. That's what I'm riveting right now. Well, I almost was able to finish this up. This is the second time this has happened to this rivet gun. I think after pulling 14,000 rivets on the cruiser, this thing is just worn out. But what happens is it'll pull a rivet halfway and then the jaws get locked up in there and it won't let go of the stem. So it won't pull it again to, to break the stem off. It just gets stuck in there. And then I, I try to take the gun all apart to, to get it to release and that doesn't work. Last time I had to get a grinder and grind off the rivet stem here and then drill the rivet out and put a new rivet in it. But that's what I'm gonna to have to do here too because even taking this apart, hoping it would release, it's still locked onto that stem and it won't come apart. So I just ordered another rivet gun from Zenith and I'll toss this one in the garbage. Well, this spar extension is complete. And then this one here, of course, is where I've left off with my broken rivet gun. Once I get the new rivet gun, I will finish this one. And I'm sure somebody's probably going to ask, am I going to build one wing completely and then go back and build the other wing? I want to try to build them both together because just for me, it's, it's kind of a psychological thing. When I get one wing done, I wanna kind of feel like I'm done so in order, so to finish one wing and then have to do the whole thing over again for the other wing would kind of suck. So I like to try to keep them both together. So obviously here I'm working on both spars. I think the next step is putting in the nose ribs. So I'll do that for both spars or both wings. And basically I'll try to get them all framed up or both of them framed up at the same time. And then eventually I think I'll probably have to use the workbench just to finish one wing, put the skins on one wing, and the other wing will probably be all framed up and ready for the skins, and then I can finish that wing. But yeah, so for now, I'm going to try to build them both at the same time. Part of the preparation for these parts is to remove all of these sharp edges or corners on the aluminum. And I just it just takes a couple swipes with the file to round it off, and then I go through each corner like this and that, and that just removes the burr. And now you have just a very slightly curved corner instead of a sharp corner. On these wing tie-down rings, I didn't even notice this until I opened up the holes, but there's a clear protective cover on there that needs to be removed. Mounting this tie-down ring is a few steps in the future, but I want to do it now just to get it done and make sure I don't forget to do it. You can see it goes flat against the rib. And on this particular rib, where it goes, this is rib number seven, it doesn't sit flush against the spar because it hits this rivet. So if I move this over to, let's just say this rib here, then you can see it sits against the rib and it sits flush against the spar. But on rib number seven, it hits the rivet. 
So I'm thinking I have two options. I could notch out the tie down ring a little bit to go over the rivet. But I think what I'm gonna do instead is just move the back end up like this and then drill the holes in the rib so it mounts like that. I just, I remember in the cruiser, I thought there was a note in the instructions that say to make sure it was up flat against the spar. Now I don't really see what that matters because the spar doesn't offer any additional support, but this one won't sit up against the spar unless I do notch it out, which I don't think I wanna do. I think I'm just going to mount it like this. Something else I need to think about when I mount this on this rib and drill the holes is where exactly do I put it? How far out do I want this to stick down? This is the bottom of the wing. And you know, there's gonna be another piece of skin on here. So account for that little bit of thickness. And it doesn't need to stick down that far. I'm gonna guess probably right about there will look just fine. To get this in position height wise, I'm just gonna put this piece of wood under here. It's about the same thickness of the rivet. And yes, Brian wrote that on there, subscribe to Glass Air Guy. But it just gives me a spacer. Now it's a nice even space along the bottom. Now I can just mark the holes and match drill these holes into the rib. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take my fine point Sharpie and I'm just going to trace two of the holes. I'll, I'll do two of the holes and then I'll drill those two holes, put Clecos in those two holes to hold it in position and then I can match drill the rest of the holes. Just to be a little bit more accurate, I, I drill the first hole with a number 40 drill bit, then I'll open it up to a number 30, and then finally to a number 20, which is the A5 rivet size hole. Thanks so much for following along on my Zenith CH750 Super Duty build. Hopefully you guys are building along on your airplanes. In the next video, we are going to get these wings framed up and ready for riveting.